Okay, everybody, here's your next lesson on unit rates. And let me go ahead and get you started up here. So unit rates, let's go ahead and go over some key terms here. A rate is a ratio that compares two quantities measured in different units. And uh, whether you know it or not, the a rate is, you know, for the most part, any ratio. You're comparing apples to oranges. You're looking at two different units. Um, usually we're talking about units of measure like money and distance. So you know you can run you can run so many yards in so many seconds. Yards and seconds, that's a rate. Uh, when you ask your parents how fast they're driving, you're going 35 miles per hour. If you're Mr. Gaston, you drive you know 70, 80, 90 miles per hour through school zones. okay? So talk to him about that later. All right, a unit rate, a unit rate is, um, the rate for one unit of a given quantity. Unit rates have a denominator of one. Okay, so that's, you know, we're looking at the rate of one. So how far are you going every hour? How fast can you run per minute? How, you know, how long does it take you to run for one mile? It's always about one. How much does a one gallon of, of uh, milk cost at the store? Okay, what are, you buy, what are you paying for for one dozen eggs? It's always what the rate is for one. That's what it is. Okay, example one, your heart beats 150 times in two minutes. Divide to figure this out. Now, one of the rules of, uh, of thumb, here's my, here's my thumb right here. The rules of thumb for when you're um, figuring out these problems is whatever you're looking for the unit rate for, whatever that is, um, you want that in the denominator. That's the number you're dividing by. Okay, so if we're looking for how many, you know, heartbeats you get per minute, then you want minutes in the denominator. Okay, if you're looking for how many miles you can go in an hour, you want hours here. If you're looking for how much something costs per ounce, you want ounce here, ounces. So you you want that quantity, whatever you're looking for one of. That's got to be there. That's what you're dividing by, okay? How much does something cost for, you know, how much can you get for $1? You want that there. Very important that you put your whatever your, your goal is, whatever the unit rate you're looking for, in the denominator. That's, that's what you want going on there, okay? So 150 divided by 2, pretty simple. 75 heartbeats per minute. Very important, make sure you label your answers when you... Write them down. Don't just write 75, I'm done. All right, next problem, Mr. Oliver or Mr. Gasson. No, make sure you, you know, you label it. Heartbeats per minute. Something about, you know, what what's the units you're comparing? We're comparing heartbeats to minutes. Now it's a rate. Let's see, a rate has two different units. Heartbeats and minutes. That's what we're dealing with right there. Okay, next example here. Amy can read 88 pages in four hours. What is Amy's unit rate? How many pages can she read per hour? Okay, so we're looking for what Amy can do in one hour. So where do we want hours to be? Um, remember, I said in the previous slide that we want whatever we're looking the unit rate for, whatever the unit rate is, we want that in the denominator. So are we looking for how many pages Amy can read in an hour? Or are we looking for how many hours it takes Amy to read one page? What's most likely? I, I think the first one's more likely. So you're gonna you're gonna want 88 over four. We're looking for what's her rate per hour, you know, not how many hours it takes her to read one page. That would be silly. Okay. So 88 divided by four. And what do you get? You get 22 pages per hour. So there you go. All right, so that's a modest uh, amount of reading per hour. I don't know if that's that great, but you know, maybe she's reading uh, something that's kind of complicated, you know, like a, like a math journal or something. That would be ridiculous. All right, next one here. Uh, using your unit rates. Right here is um, where you're going to find the missing terms. Uh, sometimes you're going to be missing a term. You're going to use a unit rate to set it equal to another one. And third, you're going to solve for what is missing by dividing or multiplying. Okay, now this is an example right here, example three. Joe's car goes 
25 miles per gallon of gasoline. It gets 25 miles per gallon of gasoline. How far can Joe's car go on eight gallons of gasoline? And in this example, we're given the unit rate. The unit rate is 25 miles per gallon. Okay, so that's not really the question. The question is I'm asking you, what, what can Joe's car get in one gallon or how far can it go in, in for, with one gallon? It's about how far can his car go on eight gallons of gas, all right? So we need to set up an equal ratio next to it. So when we set this up, where are we gonna put eight gallons? Where are we gonna put that? Are we gonna put it on the top or on the bottom? Yep, on the bottom. So it goes on the bottom because we want everything to match up. Gallons is here, gallons is here. So miles here and unknown miles here. We don't know how many miles that is, okay? So we can put M there or X, or whatever letter you want, or don't put anything at all. It really doesn't matter. But um, that's the unknown. We don't know what that is. We're not going to put eight gallons on top. That would give us uh, kind of a nutty answer, so don't do that. Okay? So now look at the factor here. How many times is one factor into eight? And it's eight times. That's pretty simple. And then do 25 times eight, and you get, sorry, skip through that, 200. So Joe's car can go 200 miles on eight gallons of gas. All right. All right. So... That's okay. You know, you, you know, nowadays we're looking for our cars to get better gas mileage than 25. You know, it's getting more and more common to see cars that get 30 miles per gallon, 35, 40. So uh, 25 miles, that's okay. It's like an SUV probably, a little bit of a small SUV. Okay, now let's compare unit prices. And uh, here's our first example on, you know, looking at prices of things. Here we go. Juice is sold in two different sizes. A 48-ounce bottle costs $2.07. A 32-ounce bottle costs $1.64. A lot of consumers look at this. You know, maybe they they don't know a lot about unit rates or know about the math. They might look at this and go, hey, a dollar or dollar sixty-four, that's a better deal. I'm not paying two oh seven. You know, it doesn't look like much, uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna be that much more. I know 48 ounces is more than than 32, and you might be thinking that. Okay, so average consumer is gonna go with the cheaper thing. But you, sixth graders, you know, you, you mathematicians, you're more savvy than that. So let's go ahead and set this up. So we're gonna do $2.07 divided by the quantity, because we're gonna, we're gonna wanna know how much are you spending for one ounce, one fluid ounce, like, you know, one big gulp of that juice. How much is it gonna cost for every gulp, you know? So you do the division using your calculator. You can use it. Use your, your number machine in your backpack and figure that out. Now let's round this because uh, this is, you know, if we're dealing with money, we're not going to, we don't need thousands or ten thousands or hundred thousands or millions. We don't need those place values. Um, we just need two decimal values, right? Because that's, this is money. So does that four stay the same or does it round up? And you are correct. It stays the same. It's next to a three. Remember the rhyme? Four or less, let it rest. Five or more, raise the score. So that comes out to the 48-ounce bottle. Comes out to about four cents per ounce. Now, this is, this is kind of estimated because we rounded. This is not exact, but that's okay. If, if we need to be more exact, we can look at this decimal again. But uh, let's look at the next amount. All right, so you get it, you know, for a dollar sixty-four, you get thirty-two ounces of juice. So that was the cheaper option, but let's see if that truly is cheaper than what um, the forty-eight ounce bottle went for. So you do the math again: dollar sixty-four divided by thirty-two. Using your calculator, you get this, and we just need two values: the zero and the five. And let's make sure that five um, either stays a five or does it round up to a six, and it's next to a one. Four or less, let it rest. Five or more, raise the score. And that's definitely, one is not five or more. I know this is a five, but that doesn't count. It's the number it's next to that you're comparing to. That tells you whether to round up or leave it the way it is. So that comes out to five cents per ounce. So every gulp you take of that juice, you're swallowing a nickel. That's that's basically how it goes. You, have a, you, know, you shouldn't swallow nickels. That's probably not good for your, your stomach. But... Um, I guess that's what's going to happen. Sorry. 48 fluid ounce bottle. That that 48 ounce bottle is the best value. It's a better 
it's the better value of the two. That's what it is. Okay, here's another example. Why don't you go ahead and try this one out on your own and, um, you know, pause the video anytime and then unpause it when you're ready to check it and see how you did. Okay, so at the deli, you purchased, you purchased $3, or I'm sorry, 3.65 pounds of turkey salad for $15.65 and 7.29 pounds of ham salad for $30.51. That's a lot more. That's almost double what you're paying for this turkey salad. That looks like you're paying way too much, but let's figure this out. Let's be good consumers here and, and figure out what these numbers really come out to, which is the better buy. All right, so let's set it up. Money over quantity. We don't really, we're not really interested in how much we can get for $1, even though that, that does kind of make sense. We want to figure out what are we getting per pound? You know, when you when you look at the deli counter, it's going to give you a unit rate for something per pound or per ounce. It's not going to really tell you how much are you getting for one dollar. Uh, they're not going to really give you that that uh, kind of unit rate. Okay, so just do the division, and does that come out to four dollars and twenty eight cents, or does it come out to four dollars and twenty nine cents? Okay, if you said four dollars and twenty eight cents, you are Guess what? You're wrong. It's actually 4.29. It's next to a seven. So four dollars and 29 cents per pound. Okay, kind of pricey, but you know, you know, pounds a lot. You know, you're getting a lot of stuff there for a pound. Okay, the next one we're gonna do thirty dollars and 51 cents divided by uh, 7.29. And when we do the math here, that's what my calculator came up with. 4.185185. That's my computer calculator voice. And uh, does that come out to four dollars and eighteen cents, or does it come out to four dollars and nineteen cents? Hmm. Many questions here. And if you're wondering what the answer is, just look next door. It's next to a five, and that five tells you to turn that eight into a nine. So it's four dollars and nineteen cents. That is correct. So $4.19 per pound. And there you have it. Now you can tell which one's a better buy. Okay, what are you getting um, the most, you know, for your money for? You know, and obviously you're getting more for your money when you buy the ham salad. Even though you're paying $30.51 for it, um, you're getting more for your money. Okay, now I, I, I know what you're thinking. Like, hey, you know, what's the big deal? It's only 10 cents. It's only a 10 cents difference here between 29 and 19. But really, I mean, if if you're a big company, you know, let's say you're a big company in charge of ordering lunch for everybody all year long, well, maybe that 10 cents could translate into, um, you know, uh, hundreds of dollars a week. And those hundreds of dollars per week could translate into thousands of dollars per year. So, you know, you know counting pennies does save money if you're buying things in large quantities. So that's yeah, just something to think about. But yeah, the, the ham salad was the better of the two values. And there you have it. Okay, there's your flip lesson. And hope you guys uh, took your flip notes. If you didn't, make sure you go back and go over any stuff that you didn't understand. Bring questions to class tomorrow. We'll help you out. And be prepared to work on this tomorrow in class. Have a good night and see everyone tomorrow.